Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, September 1st. My name is Naeva Flory. It's my pleasure to be here with you all as part of the Million Mom Movement Council. I also have Michelle Ricci here and our newest council member, Sherry Packard from Montreal, who is joining us as a brand new council member. So excited to have her on board. And Carmela Velarde and Taz Ferreira will be joining us shortly. Today, our topic is all about the parasite connection, our gut to brain connection with parasites and how we're going to discover the hidden world of gut and brain parasites in the on this engaging journey. Um, this is an explor exploration of science behind these tiny organisms and their influence on our body and our mind. We don't realize it, but a lot of our daily habits actually have to do with what our parasites are wanting, those cravings that we have. A lot of times it's not necessarily cravings that we have, it's the cravings that our parasites have, believe it or not. They crave those sugars and salty, crunchy things that we often will want to grab for. And it's so important that we do a parasite cleanse at least one or two or three times per year. And I know most of us here are on different protocols. We're doing a parasite cleanse at least once or twice a year, which is really great for our bodies to just detox all of those parasites and other um, toxins that build up in our body. And we have so much great information to share with you today. We have an incredible presentation prepared. We're also going to have Dr. Unity joining us today to share about the parasites and this gut to brain connection. And so I'm so excited to have her on as a special guest today. And we're going to go ahead and get started with our um, in the news piece. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Michelle, and let you share that with us. Thanks so much, Nava. Welcome, everyone, and special welcome to Sherry Packard. We're so excited to have you on board. And remember, everyone, the Million Mom Movement is rotating council members. So if you um, are interested, please let us know. We're in the process of nomination, and we're also in the process of reviewing applications. So this is about all of us together. So in the news, parasites grossly fascinating subject and we're going to cover a piece here now um let's pull up the first one about the surgeon that pulled the parasite out of the woman's brain this happened in australia recently and you know naiva talked a little bit about parasites and where they come from and they actually exist in our mother's uh, digestive tract when we're in the womb so a lot of times parasites can get passed down as well, or at least our digestive uh, bacteria and health. So I know Naeva is going to pull this up in a minute. And a lot of times when we're flushing, we're doing multiple parasite cleanses throughout the year. We're not just flushing the parasites. Those parasites carry emotions and beliefs along with them. So if some of you may have realized that as you cleanse that we have such a gentle uh, parasite flush. Sometimes it can be more emotional purging than uh, being glued to the bathroom. So this is fascinating, you guys. 64-year-old woman in Australia, this surgeon, um, she was having abdominal pain for three weeks, severe memory loss and brain fog, and they brought her in for brain surgery. They thought it was a tumor and they ended up pulling out an eight centimeter, that's three inch parasite out of her brain. And everybody was flabbergasted. The thing that is the most uh, incredible about this particular situation is when they tested it, they found that it was a roundworm that's found in pythons. <laughs> what on earth? How does that happen? How does that happen? It was the first discovery of a roundworm that's found in pythons to be found in a mammal. Okay, so she lives in a place. So the, now I was gonna put this up and we're gonna talk a little bit more about parasites on the next article, but she lives in a place where pythons are, and it says this in the article as Naiva's scrolling, you'll be able to see, these pythons are prolific and she forages the food from her backyard 
And I thought this was really interesting because when, when I'm in South America and Mexico and South American countries, it's really important that I wash all of my fruits and vegetables because there are parasites, because they don't use as many pesticides and chemicals as we do. And that's why they spray our foods. So, um, you know, wash your ve veggies so you don't become an accidental host like this woman did of a parasite that isn't even common in mammals. So other brain, uh, other worms that can be found in the brain are tapeworms. This is another woman in Australia. I don't know what's going on in Australia, <laughs> but they're pulling worms out of brains here in Australia. So this was a fascinating article that talks about how um, you can, how they're passed, uh, through um, eggs and onto vegetables and and wild uh, things that you may forage. So let's go to the next article. This is fascinating and it's incredible to read. And I went down a huge rabbit hole on the uh, the parasites in the brain and how they're being discovered as of lately. I just think America. And other countries are so riddled with toxicity that it's just feeding these parasites. So I'm having trouble seeing the second article. Let me see if I can pull it up here myself. This article is... Okay, guys, thanks for your patience with me. So the most common parasites that can live in the human body and, you know, Obviously, this is an unpleasant subject, but we all have them. And traditional healers have known about parasites for years. And they say that there's not much uh, research on it. But I would beg to differ that shamans and traditional healers have known about plants and how plant medicine and various herbs and ways of eating can move parasites out of the body. Um, if you go down a little bit, how do parasites, and how do you get parasites and what are the risk factors? So eating raw fish, um, being in contact with pets. Uh, we just heard about um, foraging for food and not washing your food properly, poor hygiene, unwashed hands. Um, it sounds like doctors and pediatricians are exposed to parasites. And their patients often have them. So that would be an interesting thing to continue to look into is how is that being uh, passed back and forth in a physician's office. Um, institutional care centers, uh, traveling to other countries, living in other countries. And then, of course, the elderly and children are more uh, and people with weakened immune systems would be more susceptible to parasitic infections. So where do they live? Take a look at this, you guys, the lungs, the muscles, the joints, the blood. You know, we think of them when we do these digestive flushes and rehabilitation, we're working with our digestive tract for parasites. But look at this list, the liver, the skin, the eyes, and of course the brain. So signs, what are the signs that you may have parasites? You know, the problem with the signs and the symptoms is that they could be similar to other signs and and symptoms of other diagnoses and chronic conditions. So that's why when people have chronic conditions, they have so much relief and success on our 90-day program because as we're addressing those parasites, it's actually subsiding, helping those chronic conditions to uh, reduce and remove the pathogens that are causing them. So symptoms, um, gnashing of the teeth, um, sweats, abdominal pain, dark rings around the eyes. I mean, these could be for any kind of chronic condition, really low immunity, tiredness. And so this keeps but everything on this list just keeps pointing back to every common condition that is associated with any chronic condition, uh, common symptom that is associated with chronic conditions. So when you're infected with these parasites, um, here are the stages. 
this article is going through first the signs, um, the problem aggravates, maybe there's abdominal pain, gas, bloating, diarrhea, fatigue. Later in the third stage, there's uh, maybe un unpleasant belching. Have you ever smelled that rotten egg smell? Um, when you burped, the different sulfur and compounds. Um, stage four could be diarrhea, urgent explosive elimination, liquid stools. And parasites pretty much consume the same food that we eat. They're stealing our nutrition from us, and they also feed and crave the more acidic things. And that's why a lot of people are so deficient. We're already deficient because of our food system. And then on top of it, we have parasites that are further leaching our system of the ability to absorb and assimilate nutrition. So some common infections and health conditions caused by parasites, look at these. And the list goes on and on. I mean, it's related to every system in the body. You have 11 systems in your body and all of these can span the different systems. So most common parasites in humans, they classify parasites. So you may say, well, I don't have parasites. I went to the hospital and I got tested. They tested me for parasites. When you go to a physician and they test you, they're testing you for the most pathogenic, the ones that are the, of the most concern. But there are so many different types of parasites, different classes. The first class is the protozoa. Those are intestinal and blood tissue parasites. And I know Toss is going to be talking about a lot of this. So, and I don't want to do some of these names injustice. The second class is Helminthus. Helminth. These are parasitic worms, um, are multicellular organisms that can be seen with the naked eye in their adult stages. And they're similar to protozoa but they can be free living. Some of them can be flat worms. So as we scroll through this article and I'm scrolling on my own, I know Naeva scrolling through two, there's roundworms. We've heard of these before. Some of you might've heard of roundworms. These um, can live in the lymphatic system in the gastrointestinal tract. And these are sometimes the ones that we can see when we uh, eliminate. And then if we scroll, the thorny headed worms are number three. And those are ectoparasites. And ectoparasites are also multicellular organisms that live on the skin of a host. And these, those can happen from, you know, cotton is genetically modified. Some people who sweat uh, or have open glands can get these parasites through the clothing that they wear as well, if they have a compromised immune system. Of course, ticks and mites and chiggers and scabies. So then it talks about how to avoid getting parasites. Really, it comes down to hygiene and how you're cleaning your food. So we always recommend here at the Million Mom Movement that you're mostly washing in baking soda a 20 minute baking soda bath is gonna really help get the pathogens off of your foods. If you're doing berries, I recommend vinegar instead of baking soda. And then the nutrition and diet during eliminating parasites, well, we've got that pretty much dialed in. Of course, they're recommending sugar-free and refined, removing refined foods and sugars. And we're, we've pretty much got the corner on what foods to eat to get rid of them. And we've got the solution too. So I am going to, here are some antiparasitic herbs. The last part of the article, mugwort, cloves, walnut, lavender. So this is a great article, you guys, to dig into. Lots of interesting facts in here. And I'm going to let Taz, if she's here already, unpack the rest of this fascinating topic. And we'll get to our guests. 
Thanks. Hello, Anna. everyone. Thank you so much, Michelle. You read, went into so much detail there, and I know like you brought so much awareness. So thank you so much. So sorry for my my lateness. It's okay. Um, I wanted to introduce our newest member. I know we touched on it a little bit at the beginning, but I really want to introduce her. She's my brand partner, and she's an amazing human, Shari Pakaf. So you guys all see her every week on our calls. She's a mom of three and a new grandmother. She has two star athletes, hockey players and soccer. You guys all have heard her story about her son with the diabetes and how much they've overcome and how much she does in our community. So I wanted to have her on. And before having her on, we have one of our near and dear um, council member who wanted to welcome her in. So I wanted to unmute her and have her welcome her in. Let me just find that for you. There you go. Here I am. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Sherry, Naeva, Carmela, Michelle. Okay, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jody Parker. I'm one of the original Million Mom Movement Council uh, members, right? And so is my daughter. And I was, I did it for six years and I've been gone a year and Sherry and Tass and I have worked together very closely and I'm so excited. I, she's perfect. You guys, she's so good at this. You're going to learn so much from her. And I just wanted to welcome you. And I'm not staying today because I don't know if you can see behind me. I'm sitting in Italy uh, outside the Duomo eating vegan pistachio cream and gluten and dairy free pizza in Italy. <laughs> and so uh, when Tass told me that you were joining today, I was like, remind me, I will I will come on and, and welcome you. Um, but I'll let you guys take it away. But I'm you guys, everybody is listening. She's amazing. She knows so much. She is um, perfect for this new movement. And so I just had to come on and say congratulations. And I'm so proud of you. And I'm so glad that you're stepping into this and it's amazing. So I'm done, Pass back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jody. So Jody's one of the founding council members and she really just wanted to come in from Florence to welcome you in, Sherry. Sherry, do you want to say anything? Let's unmute you, yes. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so excited for this. Um, and you guys know that the Million Mom Movement has been something that's been really close to my heart since I stepped into Purium uh, almost two years ago. So to be here in this position now um, and being able to just link arms with amazing people, um, it just makes me so happy. And Jody, thank you for that. Like, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know what to say, but just thank you very much, very much. Beautiful. So I can, let's get into our topic, right? We just heard about in the news about so many different types of parasites. So I wanted to ask you guys, okay? So I get people tell, ask me this all the time. They're like, do I have parasites? I'm not sure. What do I look for? So I wanted to ask you guys, who here has a pulse? Dro drop me a one. Everyone, we all do, right? We all do. So let me tell you. We all have parasites. I know it might sound so shocking. If you go to any allopathic doctor, they'll tell you, of course you don't have parasites. You know, you're, you don't live in a third world country. This is not India, right? You don't have parasites. Well, let me tell you, you absolutely do. Do you have that pet that you sleep with every night? You know that cuddly, your dog or your cat that you cannot get enough of? Well, you know what? They give you parasites. Or how about you having a date night, a beautiful date night. You guys are going for, you know, what's your favorite? Um, ahi tuna. Well, you know what? You have parasites. There's so many ways you can have parasites. That drink that you had, that cappuccino full of dairy, you probably have parasites. Okay? And even if you're not eating like that and your spouse is, you can have parasites. Parasites can be transmitted in so many different ways. Right? It sounds unheard of, but this is the truth. And it shows up in all different forms. What form do you think it shows up the easiest? What do you think? Eczema? How about allergies, right? How about, this is something that I suffered through years, migraines. I had no idea. Did you know migraines could be a cause of parasites? How about constant phlegm? Constant coughing, and you're like, 
what could that be? And it could be parasites, right? So a great rule of thumb is to do a parasite cleanse at least two to three times a year, right? And I know here we're all aware of all the parasites, all of the different type of parasites that Michelle just spoke about. There's so many, and that's just touching the iceberg. And you know what? If you go to any allopathic doctor and you start running tests, they'll say, oh, it doesn't show up. You don't have parasites. But you know what? The most important parasites don't even show up on testings. So it's up to us to take it into our own hands and to listen to our bodies. Am I having these headaches? Am I not feeling my optimal self? You know what? Maybe I should do a parasite cleanse. So let me share my screen and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay. And I'm going to have a few guests on. So the last 50 minutes of the hour, we will share it. Okay, so what happens with parasites is that you have you have two biomarkers, okay? One that overlooks all of your viruses and the other one that's supposed to overlooking all your pathogens. But once you've opened that door up, that's what we need to be thinking about. It's a door that we open up and the parasite comes in. You know what happens to the other one that's supposed to be taking care of your immunity? it starts to get lower. So this is what we talk about when we say pathogen overload. It takes over all of the biomarkers that's supposed to be fighting viruses, that's supposed to be fighting infections. Now the parasites have taken over your body. Okay, these are the ingredients that I'm going to go through. So what are some symptoms of parasitic infections? So you know what? Parasitic infections are very similar to yeast overgrowth. Candida. So, yes? Sharing. Your screen isn't oh. sharing. Oh. Well. <laughs> sorry to cut you off. I know you're on a roll. Oh, sorry. Okay. So let me just talk about it. Okay. It doesn't matter. I think it's better without the slides then. So what happens when we have the pathogen overload that's taking over your body and the parasitic infections? Okay. So a lot of times what happens when we have when we've opened up the door to one parasitic infection, now you've opened up the door to candida. And what else do we open up that door to? Heavy metals, okay? So a lot of times when we're going through candida overgrowth, we're developing skin allergies, we're developing eczema, we're developing phlegm, um, tetanus. This is all tinnitus. This is all part of candida, right? And that doesn't mean you probably don't have parasites. Maybe what was the root cause? Maybe the parasitic infection is what started first, right? Does that make sense? Isn't that fascinating that the parasites are probably what opened the door to all of the other illnesses that you had? So doesn't it just make sense? Maybe I should just do a parasite cleanse, right? Drop me a two if that makes sense to you. Okay, before going into all the ingredients, I want to invite one of my guests on, Dr. Unity. She knows so much about parasites as well. We were like going back and forth with ideas. I was like, you know what? I need to have you on. Let's talk a little bit about this. So Unity, if you can unmute yourself. I'll unmute you. Here. There you go. Hey, family. So good to be here with you. Yay, Million Mom Movement. <laughs> So I know that you were telling me a lot about your experience with parasites. Yes, you mean um, my personal experience since early childhood and throughout yes. my life? Okay, yes. so yeah, I was born in Vietnam and um, came over to the U.S. as a refugee of war when I was mm -hmm. three. And just to mention um, the really huge connection between gut and brain and the emotional level. And there's a strong connection between PTSD, early childhood stressors and gut health. And so I grew up with wrenching pains in my gut. Um, I remember clutching my belly as a young child and spending very, very long amounts of time on the toilet. And then throughout my life, just, you know, in, in my 20s, I remember rolling around on the ground, clutching my belly because it was so distended and painful, wondering if I should go to the ER. And so um, during my two years in West Africa doing volunteer work, and the two years after that, for four years straight, 
I did not have a single solid bowel movement. I had running diarrhea for four years. And the two things that saved my life, really, um, first, when I started going to a Chinese medicine school and started getting treatments. Um, so I remember my first solid bowel movement after four years. And so then my body could start regaining some nutrients to recover. And I also am remembering I was lying on the acupuncture table and my teacher, Dr. Alex Fung, he had put needles in me. And then he came in and he put his hand on my belly and he was kind of like doing some energetic work and tossing his head. He's also a Qigong master. And he's doing this a few times and he's talking to me and he was talking about the decision to live. Really, I was that sick and that that sickly looking. And he was talking about these energetic and emotive levels of parasites where you where you don't have enough, you know, because something is taking your life force. And it's there's just so like the parasites, they are alive and there's more of them than there are of us. I mean, there's there can be so many yeast cells. And they actually are, you know, running our brain. And like you said, running our drives for what we want to eat. So that was part of the healing was the energetic levels of it for sure. I and love how you're mentioning that. I love how you're mentioning that, how you're, you felt so nutrition um, depleted, nutrient depleted, because the thing that parasites does, it eats all your nutrition, right? So this is why oh you go God. through the brain fog and you're exhausted because they're eating your nutrition to your tissues you know when you say your issues are in your tissues so the mm -hmm. parasites are in your tissues and you're not getting the minerals that your body needs so we need to change that environment absolutely amen i agree Taz. um so the other thing that saved my life was um was herbs in addition to the Chinese medicine and actually um, some of the herbs that we're going to talk about today in our ingredients. Um, and I'll mention something. Oh, maybe I'll talk about that later when we talk about the ingredients. Something I love about the ingredients from a Chinese medicine perspective. I love that. Okay. What, what ingredient do you guys think wipes out the gut? Yeah, the most? There's our part. Oh, please. Please mute. please Please mute yourself, everyone. Okay, what ingredient do you think wipes out your gut microbiome the most? Let's write it in the chat. Sugar, yes, Angela, that's great. Sorry. No. Yes, Azaria, exactly, glyphosate. Glyphosate is the number one ingredient that wipes out your healthy gut bacteria. So this allows for pathogens to come in. It allows for viruses. You are opening up the door for all of these bacteria to happen. And when, when parasites see that, they come. They come by millions. They come in and they live and they're comfortable. And they make you, don't, you're, you become their environment. They don't want to leave. And then what happens? You start craving sugar. How many of us here have had that, those sugar cravings? Okay. I have had so many clients who tell me, they're like, Taz, it's not me. It's my body. It just wants the sugar. I have to have that dessert after supper. After dinner, I have to have that dessert, right? How many of us have heard of people say that, right? It's not me. It takes over my body. But that's exactly what a parasite does. It takes over your body, right? So once we start understanding these cues that your body has been sending you, there's these signals and we need to become aware, not even hyper aware, just a little of aware of what's happening. Okay, I'm having a headache. Maybe I'm dehydrated. Maybe I have parasites. Maybe I have candida. I'm craving sugar constantly. It's the parasites talking. Why am I going through this brain fog all the time? Low iron? Well, low iron could be parasites. Parasites love eating up those red blood cells. Did you guys know that? If you're low in iron, it could be parasites. What do you think, Unity? Oh my gosh. It, it, they can eat up and they love to eat heavy metals too, right? Exactly. That relationship you're talking about. Yeah, so the yeah. mercury fillings, they love to eat it. Oh, yeah, the mercury from filling, the mercury in fish, the mercury, how about arsenic as well? Like all of the heavy metals, they love it. 
And I want to mention, if you're ever eating inorganic chicken, it contains arsenic. So mm -hmm. you can get heavy metals from so many variations of food. So let's go into the ingredients. I know you were talking to me a lot about the ingredients and in an oriental medicine kind of way. Yeah, in Chinese medicine, one of the basic tenets is thermal nature and balancing that. If you're a hot person and you have very warming herbs, that's going to um, throw you out of further balance. Likewise, if you're cold and a lot of times when the digestion is compromised and the, and the digestive engine is weak, then you're you run cold and your digestion runs cold, which may look like loose stools, phlegm, um, sluggish digestion. And so balancing the herbs with the thermal nature is really important. And um, we're going to be looking at some ingredients and those include clove, wormwood, and black walnut hull, which are the classic three. And I was just remarking well, the clove is warming and wormwood is cold and black walnut hull I'm not familiar with in Chinese herbs, but a lot of the cleansers are cold. And so you've got this balance between the cold components and the warm components, which is so important and allows it to be okay for most people to use without throwing you too far out of balance. So that that makes this one, in, in addition to some of the other balances built in, just so nice for this purpose of community healing. I love that. You know what? Also from a what I know a little bit about oriental medicine is that when you go through a parasitic infection, it's a lot of heat, a lot of fire in your belly. So that makes absolute sense that the wormwood would be cold and all of those would be more cooling to balance it out. It just makes sense to me. And you know what I love about wormwood? Wormwood is actually great for candida as well. So a lot of our ingredients in Super Cleanse are you know, they're double agents or triple agents or more than that. You know, this is why we call them superfoods because they do a lot of work, more than one. Awesome. Oh, and can I also mention, Taz, regarding the testing? You were saying that conventional medicine often says, oh, nothing was found. Um, when I was going through my crazy diarrhea years and so many other things, I had multiple rounds of tests and nothing was found. But sometimes I would pass things but like if they're looking on under the microscope, if that sample doesn't happen to contain a, a, a parasite or their eggs or ova, then yeah, your doctor will say, nope, you're just, you're just imagining it maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. And probably put you on some like antidepressants, something else <laughs> that's, that is not even related to what your body needs or is going through, right? Mm, possibly, Yeah. And antibacterials will not be helping. Antivirals will not be helping. You really need to do a parasitic cleanse. There's another ingredient in our super cleanser that I love. Okay. And that's the amalaki. Okay. And does anyone know what amalaki is? Yes. Okay. Naiva. <clears throat> amalaki is a fruit. And it's really great for parasites. It's great for getting rid of parasites. And it's one of the ingredients in our super cleanser. Absolutely. So amalaki is actually ambla, right? We know ambla, which is an Indian gooseberry that is very high in vitamin C, right? And why would that be important, right? When we're doing a parasite cleanse. Dr. Unity, what do you think? Why would it be important to incorporate the vitamin C? Well, a couple of things come to mind. Um, the I, I know it's got so many properties, including even anti-cancer. And of course, there's a relationship between parasites and cancer. But um, I know that it's a great accessible source of vitamin C. Of course, from whole foods, much more accessible than a synthetic vitamin C. And vitamin C is crucial. We know that it's crucial for the immune system, which is very much at play when dealing with parasites. And it's also crucial for membranes, to keep membranes intact. And we're talking about the lining of the gut and the parasites clinging to that lining and compromising it and making it so inflamed. So vitamin C is very anti-inflammatory. It protects membrane health in a number of ways. And it allows the cells to function in their duty of 
of dealing with the parasites and to heal from the inflammation. So vitamin C from a great source of amla. Yeah. Right. And it helps rebuild it, right? Mm -hmm. Because yes. the seda and the sarkara, it's very eliminating, right? It tightens the, the intestines. So the vitamin C is actually helping rebuild all of that. Mm-hmm. And may I also mention regarding that Senna and Cascara Sagrada, um, I have found from my, oh, here's my super cleanser because it's full moon. <laughs> but I have found for myself having a history of weak digestion that um, bowel movers will tend to make me potentially too loose. And, um, and I have to watch out for dehydration, things like that. At the same time, it's so important to include bowel movers because especially when you're cleansing, you absolutely want to keep the drainage pathways open and not be constipated. So you got to have some bowel movers in there. And when I started Super Cleanser, I started one pill instead of two just to make sure it wouldn't overdo the job on me. And I have found that dosing is so nice, again, for safe community use. Like it will... will help to prevent the stagnation and as the parasites die they're putting off toxins you gotta get them out and the heavy metals that they bound up you gotta have open pathways for that but it doesn't overdo it so you don't get cramps which senna can give you um and you don't get the dehydration the depletion of your nutrients it's just so nicely balanced this formula i really love it I love how you mentioned that because that's exactly what happens. When you look at all these, these ingredients individually, they can be brutal on your intestinal lining. But because they're, they work all synergistically and they formulated that they're in such small dosage. So you don't go through that. I have so many people, they'll look at the ingredients and they're like, uh, do I have to stay home for this entire 10 days? No, you don't. You can go and live your life. I mean, just hydrate and you will see how it's a gentle cleanse. It's nothing brutal. It's nothing that's going to, you're not going to have to stay home in the bathroom, but it does its job and it does its job so well. And I just love how it all works together. You know what I've noticed in the past um, three years, we've had such an outbreak of a herpes virus and Epstein-Barr. Have you noticed that? Oh yeah, definitely uptick. And what I've noticed with that is that is all related to parasites. Yeah, you could classify them as those, those lingering pathogens and parasites. And I won't mention for political sake that the timeline of this uptick also correlates with other world events. <laughs> Well, exactly. So always incorporate a parasitic cleanse into your daily re regime at least three times a year. And I know our other council members have great stories to share. How about you, Carmela? Do you have a story to share about this? I know you're an expert when incorporating the parasitic cleanse during the new moon and the full moon. Hi, thank you, Taz, for calling on me. I am driving, though, so I'll do my best to stay on Wi-Fi. But let me know if I fall off. Um, I did want to share um, a lot with Dr. Unity about my personal experience with parasites because um, I had a reaction when I had taken the Super Cleanse R and I had reached out to my upline, my direct coaches, then directly to Dave and then to Dr. Dana, if you recall, her being in the community. And I had this vitiligo happening and deep inflammation around my wrists. And I didn't know that it was, it started from my heavy metals, from my mercury toxicity that had leaked into my blood. So that was the root. I didn't know at that time, but I did know that the super cleanser was triggering it because it was an important root. Like it drew the dots to it being also parasitic. So upon realizing that and Dave telling me, Dave Sandoval, our formulator, I had embarked on this colonic journey. So I took a series of 50 colonics. And from that, my um, colon hydrotherapist, who I interviewed here in the Million Mom movement, she's in one of the interviews in our YouTube channel. Um, she had found a, a three inch, maybe more, um, parasite. And there were many more that were broken up. 
So this was from my initial work in detoxifying with the Super Cleanse R. But then after about 50, she realized, um, you know, she didn't ask me this question if I had mercury in my filling, if I had mercury fillings. And that's what led me to um, a holistic dentist. So um, I also have an interview of, of her in our YouTube catalog. So what Dr. Unity was talking about, absolutely, I had that exact experience. And so when I started seeing the parasite come out of me, I was very committed to ongoing, you know, um, detoxification. Um, and that vitiligo that had happened around my wrist, it's because the mercury was really above my heart space. So the inflammation, the um, that autoimmune skin condition was telling me that I have to really work at this, that I have to detox it. And so thank God for um, these wonderful team that we have here at Purium, where people really advise me what I can do. And um, yeah, now I'm symptom free of it. <laughs> so I'm really great for the inflammation. I've shown many before and afters. I wish I could show it right now, but it all had stemmed from that root initial heavy metal toxicity. And I now take the super cleanser about every six weeks on a 10 week, uh, ten day cycle just to completely remove it. And it's really gentle. Um, it wasn't that it had abruptly halted all symptoms. It was that it slowly started to really affect. And the more I monitored um, the movement of this inflammation moving out of my system, I related it to then my my work with using the Super Cleanser along with the ULT lifestyle schedule, which is two superfood meals and one lifestyle meal that I um, focused on being all organic. So um, I'm so grateful for this formula and and my guides. Thank you so much, Carmela. You know, I have a story with one of my brand partners that you know a lot of people will come up to me and say, you know fish doesn't have parasites like you know it's wild caught it's so healthy for you there's all the omegas so one of my brand partners her job was working at a fish factory and she had she had to remove all the parasites from the fish can you believe this this was her job to remove all the parasites so when you bought the fish at the store and it looks okay from the surface you have no idea what's going on the inside because by the time you cooked it, it looks like it all dies off, but it's all in there. And then what happens? It goes in you and it lives in you and it multiplies. Isn't that disgusting? I know. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to call on another council member. Shari, do you have a story about parasites? Well, I mean, I am in the middle of my parasite cleanse right now. So yes, that kind of constitutes the story um it was pretty i have to say it was pretty incredible so i'm in the 20 days in between right so we take super cleanse off for 10 days we stop for 20 and we take it again for another 10 um and so i'm in that 20 day period where i'm not taking it but i have to say that um leading up to deciding that i needed another um super cleanser i need another parasite cleanse it was incredible to me how easily i was able to pinpoint the symptoms within myself and so many of the symptoms tasks that you already spoke about dr unity spoke about them too um but the one to me well there was two that really stood out so first of all i started crave sugar which i don't because i don't eat sugar right i haven't eaten sugar in like years, I'd stay away from it. I mean, the most we have is coconut sugar or maple syrup, right? That's all I bake with. So I was pretty, I, it was pretty amazing to me when I started to notice that I was, like you said, Tass, I was craving something sweet after supper, especially after supper. Um, but then throughout the day too. So I was always craving something sweet. I was eating more fruit. I'm like, well, that do it. I wasn't cutting it. Like I needed something really sweet. Um, and the other symptom that I noticed was how it was affecting my emotions. So I felt like my mind was very cluttered all of a sudden. I felt um, like I was in a bad mood a lot of the time, but I couldn't tell you why. Like I didn't know what was going on. So, you know, it just reminded me how easy it is that we can get so caught up. Um, in the symptoms and, and kind of lose sight of really being detectives and trying to figure out what's going on, 
you know? So instead it was like, oh, I'm just in a bad mood today. Or maybe I didn't sleep well, or I don't know. I'm just in a bad mood. And I noticed that that started to become consistent, which is not like me. And so luckily, because I know this, I was able to start kind of digging deep and saying, hmm, okay, this, you know, the, the craving the sugar and the emotions and my mind, you know, is not clear what's going on. Um, and that's what led me to say, okay, you know what, it's been about six months since I had my last parasite cleanse, I'm going to do one. And, you know, it's another incredible thing. Um, if you haven't done a parasite cleanse yet, something that I was not <laughs> uh, expecting my first time around is that it really, you, your emotions kind of almost heighten or at least for me, I know that was the case for a little while. And that's actually a symptom of, of that it's working. Like the parasites are essentially dying off and I guess kind of resisting. And so it's creating this type of emotion within you. Um, and so it's good to know that because even if you're feeling that, like keep at it, you know, because it, it is the most gentle of, of cleanses I've ever come across. Um, as a holistic practitioner, I've had to um, recommend parasite cleanses in the past before finding Purium. And I hated, I really hated recommending them because they were all so harsh. Um, and I knew that it was going to take a lot of um, consistency from, from the client to really stick through it because a couple of days in most would like run for the hill and be like, that's it. Like I'm not taking this. I can't function. I can't do anything else. Um, and so I was a little skeptical when um, I started uh, my ULT and it came time for the super cleanse are, but because I was just so amazed with all the results I was already seeing um, with the superfoods um, and just a different way that it's all brought together and sourced and formulated, I gave it a go. And I'm really happy that I did because it's a much more, um, much, it, it, it's so gentle. It's so gentle. You barely realize what you're doing, but it's so key. It's such a key part of the overall transformation. And we always have to mention if you are pregnant or breastfeeding to not do the parasitic cleanse, to just eliminate the parasite cleanse until you're done because it really contracts your intestinal linings. So we don't want any of that to be happening while you're breastfeeding or pregnant. But if you're not, absolutely do this. And you know what? It's safe enough for kids to use it as well. I have a lot of kids, like teenagers, who use it and who have great results as well. Any of my other council members have anything else to add or should we go into questions? Questions? Okay, so let's open it up for Q&A. If anyone has questions, raise your hands and we will unmute you. Deborah, where did you go? Deborah, come back. Okay. Hey. Um, okay. <clears throat> so I did the parasite cleanse and I've been doing a parasite cleanse continuously for a year and a half through my naturopathic doctor. I also did the one through Perium and I still have parasites. And she told me, my naturopathic doctor told me they are roundworms and I see them. So I don't, you know, I don't know if there's anything else I need to do or can do. It's making me absolutely insane crazy because <laughs> I've been fighting them for about at least a year and a half to two years. Okay, please. Um, okay, so, so first of all, are you avoiding all of the acid forming foods? Uh Maybe not. I might not know what the acid forming foods are. Okay. So when we're doing these parasite cleanses, we need to be eliminating foods that won't be causing the parasites, right? So if we're, we're eliminating it and then we're having sushi, I mean, you're not really mean, helping yourself. Okay. I so some acid forming foods are dairy, red meat, raw fish, sugar, processed foods, right, ladies? Are you missing anything else? Dairy. I don't eat much red meat. Uh, I don't eat raw fish. Can you eat cooked fish? And caffeine. Caffeine. Uh, okay. Really, it's recommended that when, when you have parasites and you're going into the deep dive, that you follow an alkaline 
diet. So I did put a link in the comments to a tool that I use with clients that really shows where foods are heavily sprayed, how to find foods, what foods are alkaline, what foods to stay away from if you're interested in clicking on it. But really you want to think of wet hydrating alkaline fruits and vegetables so you know if you especially during the deeper 10 days my recommendation for everyone who is dealing with parasites on a long term would be to do six months of ult in a row can i also recommend um check your water okay because parasites love being in, you know, sink water. So make sure you're having a spring water. Maybe you can incorporate some ozonated water. Um, coconut oil is great. I love garlic, papaya seeds, and pumpkin seeds. If you want to incorporate that as well into your lifestyle. Sherry, um, Naiva, I have well water. Is that okay? I mean, that's not alkaline, or that could be I, something. It is. What well do you think, Sherry? Is, but you should test your well water. We live in the mountains, and we have well water also. But there are some, there are some areas where different things are common in the ground, so that will come through the well water. My recommendation would be to test well water. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Definitely have it tested because there are some parasites that tend to live in the ground, so you'd want to get that checked to be okay. To be sure. And I don't know how to get that uh what she mentioned she would put in the thing for me to get i don't know i'm not very technical so i don't know how to get whatever she said she was going to put up okay in the chat when michelle is talking about in the chat i think that's what you're there's talking a link about. in the chat so if you find the, the link in the chat you should be able oh. to just click on it and we'll open in a new window Thank my you. experience with well water is that it's usually tested for heavy metals yeah Probably, <laughs> probably. Yeah. It's, it's, well water is tested to the point of acceptable levels of certain things. And, mm -hmm. and then they pass the well water. But if you want to know what's in your water and what's acceptable for you and how to filter your water, whether it's a well or not, then you would have your own water tested so you would have that information. Instead of relying on the county or the city, for example, to tell you what's safe. You can determine. Thank you. Yourself. Thank you so okay. much, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. I hope we helped. Okay. Uh, Delinder, I'll ask you to unmute. Hi. Um, we have a, a five year old, a seven month year old, and my um, niece just had a baby about three months, and they're all suffering with eczema, where um, my seven month is with me. And it's right in the middle of his face, like up his face, and he always scratching. What could we do for that? Because we, it looks like as eczema because their skin is dry. Five year old, she used to not suffer as much as the baby is suffering right now. So, but she do it too. So, what could we do for the babies, the young people? I'll have our newest council member answer that. Hi, Delinda. So right off the bat, I would suggest um, removing any dairy from the diet, um, anything containing sugar, any processed foods, although I doubt the seven-month-old is having any of that just yet. Um, but that that's definitely what I would do first, because anytime we're seeing anything happening with the skin, it's, it's a clear indication of something going on within the body. So it's a reflection of our health inside the body. Specifically, it's a reflection of our gut microbiome. So... Um, the older ones, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get all the ages. You said you have a seven month old, five year old, five -year -old. Five -year -old. And, then, and then we have the seven month. Now he breast, she breastfeed him. So is it, is it what she's eating that's causing his eczema? Yes. Yes. In that case, it would be to, to speak with the mom and see what she is having. So any dairy, sugars, processed foods, uh, caffeine, all of those things, she would have to start eliminating. It would also be a great thing for her to begin taking our biomedic because it's the best way to start preparing the gut. Um, and all of this is being passed on to baby, right, through her milk. So that's a safe way for baby at the age that baby is to be getting uh, the biomedic through the milk. Thank you. So let's go to our, I don't think we have time for another question. 
let's go to our call to action. Yes, Virginia Stanley would be great. So let's go to our call to action. Okay, my first call to action. So we at the Million Mom Movement often reference the toxin in our daily bread. It's the most comprehensive glyphosate testing of food products ever done in the U.S. by the Detox Project. So as our Million Mom Movement uh, community here knows very well, glyphosate is the active ingredient in the weed, in the weed killer Roundup and is a probable carcinogen. Um, yeah, in the report, though, of the toxin in our daily bread, the highest levels of glyphosate were detected in General Mills Cheerios with 729, I believe, parts per billion. The apparent safe level of glyphosate for children is 160 parts per billion. So if we put that into context, a child would only need to eat one single 60 gram serving of a food containing 160 parts per billion of glyphosate in order to reach their maximum dose that's considered safe. So it's very fitting. Um, actually, I'll let that s like sink in for a second, but it's, it's very fitting that this is my first call to action as a council member, because I remember the first time that I read the study and my mind immediately went back to when my kids were toddlers and they're most fed the snack I gave them most often were Cheerios. Um, Cheerios had always been suggested as a perfect toddler food um, because of the low sugar, the parent heart health, right? Um, and plus those little O's are the perfect size for hand and eye coordination practice. So I thought that I was getting bonus points as a mom. I even went out and bought the Cheerio board books where my kids would sit and uh, play with, you know, the little Oreo, um, or the little Cheerios and put them into the board book while eating them. So, and I'm reading this comment here, safe is relative exactly. It's really important. Yes, no amount of glyphosate is actually safe. But if you look at what they, you know, what is marked safe? Because so many people follow the guidelines and say, well, there is, you know, a certain amount that's considered safe. Well, either way, when we're talking about Cheerios, this amount far exceeds what's considered safe, especially for our children. So, um, while we don't know what we don't know when we don't know it, right? Moving forward, I'm so, I'm so grateful to to have read this study and to have ha and to have this knowledge with me now, because I can share it with others, um, like my six month old grandson who will never ever eat Cheerios, right? As a toddler snack, so. After reading the study, of course, it goes without saying, we need to be sharing this. So today we're asking everybody to make a post about glyphosate in Cheerios. Take a photo of the box of, glyph uh, of Cheerios, um, make a post, create a reel, and share it. So first I would say post it, but then I would also say maybe tag 10 people in it or share it specifically with 10 people that you know. Let's start getting this information out there. Also, over the weekend, you're going to be seeing friends and family. Maybe uh, you have some events in your community like I do. I'm going to spend most of my weekend in a hockey arena with my kids. Talk with people. Share this information and conversation. Don't um, underestimate the power of word of mouth and the power and how powerful we all are. Beautiful. So Carmela, will you close us up, please? She here. Uh, so good to have you here, Ariel. And I that you have that connection project and your personal experience with your sons. So next week, guys, um, we have again for Fierce Friday. I hope you join us again and be a friend or share this on with um, your friend who would really love to learn more about collagen. So we're unlocking um, the potential of collagen production with our organic superfood lifestyle. And, and we'd love to have you. We also just do that link up. Okay, well, next week we're talking all about collagen. So you can follow us on Facebook. It's the Million Mom Official Group, our Instagram and tag us and we will repost you, Twitter and follow, like, and share us. So we will unmute you and we will see you next week.
Thank you all for joining us today. And make thank sure you. That, yeah, if this is your first call, please yeah. reach out to the person who invited you here. We'd love for you to be a part of our community and join us on our next Fierce Friday. So we'll see you all next week.